Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So we're back on the Pango Explorer build and I've got a few more parts that we're gonna install today. The parts that I've got here are knobs, which are a nice set from Vintage Forge. And I'll talk a little bit more about those when we install them. And I've also got a truss rod cover. I'm still waiting on the tuners and the nut. By the time this episode airs, I should be able to squeeze those in. So about these knobs, I've put these CTS US spec pots on here. And the knobs that came with the kit were meant for imported pots that were six millimeter. Six millimeter pots usually have an 18 tooth knob on there. US spec pots have a quarter inch 24 tooth pattern. And so what I've done is I've ordered these vintage forge knobs and these are a pretty nice set actually. I, I was really surprised by the vintage forge set that I ordered for my Gibson Studio Standard. This is a white knob with a clear top and I just thought it kind of went really well with the theme that I've got going on here. So let's install these now. Yeah, those are gonna work great. All right, hopefully you get the theme that I'm going for here and I'll show you like a, a shot where I've panned out. Maybe I'll take a picture with a camera or something, but I've kind of got this white knob, white pickup, white headstock theme going on with the dark body of the guitar, dark fretboard, and a few other black bits and pieces. I didn't really want to go with the black bridge and tailpiece, but I do have black tuners coming. Everything just really honestly kind of works together. I've had this headstock drying for probably been about a week and a half, I'm guessing. And I think that's necessary because the lacquer, when it sprays out of the can, it's pretty soft. And usually even after 24 hours, 48 hours, if you try to sand it, it starts to go kind of gummy on you. You can really tell when you install hardware that there's a line that will form around all the hardware where the, the lacquer is kind of pushed out from under whatever you've installed. This truss rod cover would suffer that same fate if I was to install it right after I painted this, but I think at this point it'll be fine. And what I've done is I picked up this truss rod cover that's kind of bell shaped like a Gibson style cover. All right, well, I've got two things that I'm gonna install next, and that is the nut and the tuners which have now arrived oh and actually a third thing which is my truss rod cover i'll get all three of those things started we're going to start by removing the nut if you want to know what kind of nut this is it's a graph tech nut and i'll list the link to this part number and everything in the uh, description of the episode today. This is just a standard behind the fretboard nut. It's not a slotted fretboard. That's almost a Gibson style, maybe more like a Jackson style nut. I'll post the link to my tuners and I'll post the link to my truss rod cover. Let's go ahead and remove this nut. If you have not seen me do this before, basically I'm just gonna whack this nut off of there with a, a, a wood block. I've got a quick tip video on slotting a nut, so I'm not gonna show the whole process Process. Feel free to look through my quick tips playlist for that. So let's get this nut off of here. All right, that came off pretty clean. You can see this nut is a really pretty hollow nut. All right, now what's left to do is just to clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum out some of these chips and then I'll get the new nut glued back in. All right, so skipping ahead just a little bit, I did go ahead and mount the truss rod cover after I glued in this nut here. So both things are done. These tuners are just loosely mounted, but you can see the style I was going for. This style is, is sort of a mini oval head tuner. I just really like that style on an Explorer. The next thing to do on this is, since these are just loosely mounted, we need to put the screws in the backside. So the key to mounting these straight is to get the bottoms lined up with a straight edge of some sort. But if you do have to eyeball it, get it as close as you can with a straight edge, turn all the keys the same way on top, and then try to get the gaps consistent between all of them. Now we just need to start drilling some holes. Okay, we're gonna start with this tuner down here on the end. Whatever you do, don't drill through your peg head. Now, as you go down the line here, just make sure none of these have moved. And if they have moved, you can, you've got a little bit of a window to readjust them and just kind of keep going down the line. Okay, well, those look pretty good now. We just need to flip it over and retighten the nuts on the front. And there's the completed headstock, tuners, truss rod cover, and nut, and of course the finish that I applied. Looks pretty good right now. I guess uh, we'll see how it functions when the strings are installed. These tuners, by the way, 
These are Wilkinson 19 to 1 ratio tuners and they're Jin Ho manufactured. So they're a pretty good set. And jumping ahead, I've got strings on here now. The tuners are working out great. They're really nice and precise and they're holding a good tune. I was able to stretch all these strings out. I've also set the intonation. Basically, you set the high E string at exactly your scale length, which is 24 and 3 quarter. And then everything else kind of falls back from there except when you get up to the D string, it kind of comes forward again and then it starts to fall back. So kind of a zigzag pattern. That's the reason that it, the bridge is set at a slight angle and that's because everything sort of falls back in this direction. Everything's working great with the electronics. I'll play it here in a little bit, but one thing I do want to point out, I don't know what it is about this kit, uh, but I don't know if the neck angle was exactly right. Right now, I've got the bridge bottomed out and the action is just a bit higher than I would really like it. It's actually like 5 ths on most of the strings of the 17th fret and I'd really like it to be 4. Now the only way I can think to adjust that is I can take something off the bottom of the bridge so that it sits a little bit lower or maybe even try to recess the, the little bushings that are on the bottom of the, of the bridge that mount into the body. Um, since I've already been messing with these holes and kind of doing that, I may do that later. I'm not really sure, but it's actually pretty good right now. It's, I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not as low as I would like it to be. I also set the height on my pickups. I've got a quick tip video on setting pickup height on a Stratocaster. Honestly, it's not that much different on a Les Paul or a double humbucker guitar. You just want to pick the spec that you want to start out with, fret the guitar at the last fret, and measure that distance to the tops of each one of the humbuckers and adjust them there and then sort of tune by ear from there. These things are set at about a sixteenth of an inch and they sound pretty good right now. Again, I'll play them in a little bit. So I want to give you a chance to see what the entire guitar looks like. So I'll do a sort of a still picture where we can sort of see like all the white appointments and the wine red body and all of that. And I do want to do one more thing. Pango offers a $15 discount to anybody who does a video on the build. And so I'm going to do a quick recap of the entire build right before we play this thing. And that'll be just for my own selfish benefit of getting 15 bucks back from Pango. So if you all want to skip ahead, I don't blame you, but here's a recap. Let's get a few sounds out of this thing. One thing that won't come across in the video is that this body is quite lively and resonant for what the wood is. And I guess that's probably due to the fact that it really doesn't have a whole lot of finish on it. It's just got these light coats of oil. Anyway, let's just go ahead and try it out. So, one thing is, I, I should mention, I've got this playing through a, a PV Special 20. That's just the amp that I usually have sitting around the shop here. And uh, there's nothing special about it. It's just a little 20 watt tube amp. It's got really good tones, I think, for what it is. I mean, it's got really, really clear rhythm tones. And then when it 
it comes to the lead tones, it's actually got a really good bite. All right, so some kind of metalish tones out of this metalish guitar. Let's see here. Yeah, you know, you get the idea. All right, well, next I'm off to email Pango and see if I can't get that $15 discount. I'll give you guys a status update in the comments on that if I actually do get it. But anyway, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me on this build. It's been a really fun project. I love all the comments you guys have given me, and it feels like I've been building this right alongside you guys. So I really appreciate it. Thanks for all the likes. Thanks for all the subscriptions, and I'll see you guys next time.